Hi, my name is Esther. If you do not know who I am, my name is Esther and I am so excited to come to you today because, you know, what has I said, you know, if you listen to my prayers earlier, I was able to address an issue that I faced today with someone who I believe is going through a challenging time. And I wanted to talk to you because, you know, to speak to some, to everyone about this whole thing, because I think we all have struggled a lot with believing God. You know, when God is silent, you know, you wonder, OK, God, I have believed in you. I have prayed and I've trusted in you. What is going on? You know, there are so many times that we never know why God doesn't do what he says he's going to do or what we perceive that he should be doing. All right. So don't forget, we are acting like bosses, okay? So join me as I share my own view, all right? It's Esther's view. So if you have not subscribed, please do so because it just makes me feel good that you have, you know, subscribed. And, you know, I see that I get the support. Don't you like to be supported? We all love to be supported. Let's be honest, okay? So um, my channel is not a paid channel, so you don't have to worry about that, okay? But I just love the fact that I'm growing and I, I get to see the growth and we all love to do something that is growing. So that is why I'm asking you to subscribe, all right? All right, so this particular gentleman is a good gentleman. He's a white collar, what we call it, like, you know, the job, what I think was a six-figure job. And he told me that, um, um, first of all, he came to me because he... Um, um, no, I will skip that. I will not tell you why. Yeah, um, but we were sharing about the whole journey of how he's a Christian and how he was diagnosed with cancer. And now he believes he has come back. The cancer has come back. And he's so mad at God. Very, very mad. I mean, he used profanity. And I had to tell him, watch your mouth. You know, because I don't believe, you know, as a Christian, no matter how bad you get or, or no matter how mad you are at God, I don't believe we should be able to be cursing at God. I don't believe we should, because I think the word says what, you do not, do not use profanity. Yeah, I don't use it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't stop any, I don't even know why we use those words. You know, they're not good words, you know, and we always tell the kids don't say them, but then us as adults, we say them. So we have to watch ourselves. Okay. But anyways. So he was very challenged about the whole idea of not being able to uh, work because he was laid off because of the diagnosis. So I felt very merciful to him because as you all know, if you have been earning a certain type of money and then all of a sudden you wake up and you do not have any financial, you know, um, gains coming in and I bet, I guess he did not um he did not save anything he did not invest i think he did not invest he's not a very old person he think he's in his 40s if i'm not wrong so most of us we know that 40 year olds you some of the 40 years old are late boomers you know or you do not know what they have gone through before to him he lost you know what he says he lost investments and how he lost them was because the person that he trusted was a christian person and they duped him out of his money now i don't know how true that is but he said they you know he was able to give money and all that but i believe the way i i see it or the way i hear when i whatever i heard when he's speaking is that he believed god for what was this financial you know like i'll be on private jets i'll be on this i'll be on this i'll be on this because i believe in jesus just like you know we look at other pastors we look at some evangelisms we look like you know we look like our pastors some pastors are very very wealthy and which is good because you know they ought to be wealthy they are representing the kingdom of god in royalty so it's it's a good thing but to so many people it is not a good thing because it's a representation of what they do not have so you have angry christians who are like it doesn't work it only works for them because we are giving money to the church all right now this is not a conversation about if you should give or you should not give that this is not the conversation personally i love giving it's i i i, I have a gift called giving you know, my brother has told me that. So I have a gift called giving. I have no problem, you know, giving to the poor, the widows, and the orphan and the orphans. That's all. All right. Those. That's all three of them. Okay. All right. So that's 
I enjoy doing it. I enjoy helping someone. It gives me fulfillment that I'm able to help someone. Just because I come from a country where a lot of people are not wealthy. All right, there are those who are wealthy, but a lot of people they are not wealthy. So yes, I love I love helping out. Okay. So this particular person ended up. We'll call him uh, Joe. So Joe ended up going to Israel. He's gone to Israel. He's gone to Africa. He's gone on mission field to most of the Asian. The reason why I made this video is because. I feel as if Christians, we do stuff and then we expect God to answer it the same way we think he should answer it. So anything outside of how God answers it, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem to you. It becomes a problem to me. It becomes a problem to everyone else. While we say, well, God did not answer my prayer. Well, are you sure he didn't answer your prayer or he didn't answer the way you wanted it to be answered? Because I found myself, even I myself, I have had to check myself so many times because I'm like, God, is that you? Who is this what you want or is it what I want? Is it what I desire so bad that if you don't do it, then I have a problem with you? You know what I mean? So that's that's what I was thinking. And I told the guy, I was like, you know what? Contrary to what you think, God is there. Because he kept saying, I don't believe God is there. We've been lying so many times. I don't believe God is there. And I said, look, just because you do, don't, you do have a terminal, what seems to you is a terminal disease and no one else can be able to help you in the medical field. And now even God has failed you. Let me remind you something. God is still there. Whether he chooses to heal you or not, he's still God. He knows you better than I do. He knows you better than we do. We all know that. That we never know what God, you know, can do until we have let it have, let, release it to him fully, a hundred percent, a hundred percent reliance on God. That if to, today he chooses to heal us or not, he's still God. If today he chooses to bless us or not, he's still God. If today he chooses to show up, when we say show up, we want to see you face to face. And if he doesn't show up that moment, that minute, that hour, he's still God. The book of Isaiah says, who is, who is the advisor of this God? Mind you, there are so many people, the word, whenever we read this book, you know, whenever I read a Bible, I have a kiddo Bible. I, I teach Sunday school, so I love kids' Bibles. But, you know, whenever, um, whenever we think that, you know, God is not there or God should do it this way or whenever we read the word of God and then we are here thinking that for us it should be different you're mistaken because if ask yourself someone like Elijah who was able to call down fire from heaven and kill all these people in the ball and then you know the ball the the uh, ball worshippers B-A-A-L you know I have an accent B-A-A-L so if he was able to do all that, and then with the sound of a voice of a woman, this man changed completely, started running for his life. Think about that. Think about that. He must have felt discouraged. He even told God, you know, if, if I'm the only one left. All right, let's think about Job. We love to talk about Job double portion, but let me not, let's look at it. You lose your wife. You lose your kids. Oh, no, no, you don't lose your wife. You lose everything. You lose every property you have ever known. You lose all your children, everything. And even you have a wife who's telling you, you know what? You might as well curse this God and die. All right? You're done with that? Look at David. David for sure has mourned all the time. He has always complained to God. God, my, you know, the people, I'm, they're all following me. My enemies are pursuing me. They are all overtaking me. They are all, you know, they are throwing all kind of jobs. They are trying to kill me. These people, even my own household. Let's not forget what David went through with his own sons. All right. So whenever we read the Bible and we think about, you know, these people who have gone through it, please don't think that we are an exception. If you want to know how the Christian work look like, think about the cross. Think about it. If Jesus was able to be held if Jesus was able to be betrayed, if Jesus was able to be beaten up, if Jesus was able to be accused, false charges, all right? And if Jesus was able 
to be done all that, all right, be beaten up. He carried a cross that was very difficult. You can imagine. It was very difficult for Jesus to carry that cross because he fell so many times. But he got back up. He even got someone to help him called Simon of Ethiopia, right? He came and helped him carry the cross. So if Jesus endured all that, what about our own crosses? What about that disease? What about that challenge, that waiting on God that seems to be he's so quiet? Like that man said, God doesn't speak. He doesn't, there is no God. He doesn't speak. We are all, you know, we are all crazy. We are thinking our own stuff and we are all crazy. You know, that, you know, people say that he taught, speak through scriptures. Well, that's the one way. Some people see visions. Others, they see dreams. Others, they have dream. Others, they hear audibly. Others, they read the word and they hear God. So you cannot, God is not a one-way God. He's not a one-way God. Please never forget that. My God is not a one-way God. He's not. So today, I I'm coming to you to encourage you to do one thing. Why you wait on God and why you follow this Christianity that we love so much to follow. Please know it's all not always roses. Even a rose has its own thorns. And why you cannot remove the thorn. And we know a God who is able to remove that thorn. Remember that if he chooses not to do it, we will still trust him. Now ask yourself this. When I follow God, if he chooses to keep this whole thing that I'm going through, the way it is, will I trust him? Will I still preach? Will I notice that I am a wounded soldier? Will I notice that I am a wounded soldier in the Christian walk and trust God that he is able to bind my wounds and keep going forward? Or are you going to preach while you yourself, you doubt this God? The most surprising thing to me to, for, about this gentleman is the fact that he told me he went on missions fields He's preaching everywhere he goes. But you're preaching a God who you don't even know. So you're, you're preaching a weak word. So let us all, Christians, all of us, let us all trust this God. That he is not a God who is able to give you just, you know, he's able to give you everything. But if he chooses, just the same way as a parent, you're able to give your kids everything. But you choose not to. Not because you can't, but because you choose. Why you choose it? You have your own reasons, right? Same thing with God. He can choose to bless me or not bless me. And if he does, then I'll still trust him because he knows what is best for Esther. And he knows what is best for you. Please never doubt that. My God is good. If we can sing, my God is good, He's good, he's righteous, he's merciful, he's grateful, he's righteous, he's everything to us. Then you know for sure he loves you that much, that much. He's so much in love with you. If only you can trust him. And you know what? Always remember, you are not the person on the pool of Bethsaida for 40 years waiting for an angel to stir. You're not that blind woman, blind Bat Myers, who was blind. You're not the man at the pool, or, you know, at the beautiful gate waiting to be handed some few coins. I bet you that man waited for years. For years he waited. He probably gave up on waiting on God about, Have I, am I ever going to walk? But one day, one minute, everything changes. When Peter came and he said, Get up and walk. And he walks. Um, what am I saying here? No matter what situation you are in, never put God in a box. Never doubt God exists. And always trust that he is for you 100%. And if you're going through something, he knows you can do it. He knows he, that battle has chosen you for a reason. He gave up Job for a reason. He trusts you to make his kingdom look so good. So good. So good that people will want to be one. People will want to join the Christianity. Would you wear it with a pride? Would you wear whatever scars that you have? Whatever pain that you have? 
whatever history that you have, whatever purse that you have, wear it so much with a pride that people will look and say, I want her God. I want her God. If people who have gone through, you know, who have gone through, through their go-throughs and God has done something to them look like that, then I want their God. Please be encouraged. God is there. He's talking. You just need to listen. Remove every other notion because that guy was able to say, well, I've heard people say, no, take away everything what people have said and trust God for who he is. On a clean slate, God, I need to hear you. The way you speak, you got to speak to me. We've heard he's come. He's already been, you know, he's already appeared to Muslims and all that good stuff. So we add ourselves encourage ourselves that he is going to appear to us if he can do it for the muslim he can do it for us as well if he can do it for the people who don't believe he can do it for us just wait wait be expectant don't be doubtful remove every doubt remove every fear and know that if this god is there he'll answer it he'll answer you now be open-minded and as always we'll see you next time thank you this is esther